Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Somos Biology. In this video, we are going to talk about another plant hormone that is ethylene. So what is ethylene plant hormone? What are the functions of ethylene? What is the ethylene biosynthesis pathway? The ethylene signaling processes. So we are going to talk about all these features about the ethylene hormone in plant biology. So stay tuned and watch the video. The first thing that we are going to talk about is ethylene biosynthesis okay and we are going to show you an animation explaining the every single details of the ethylene biosynthesis pathway but before that let's talk about the basic overview of ethylene biosynthesis and what it's all about. In 1901 uh, a process observed in the dark ground pea seedlings growing in the laboratory exhibited symptoms that were later termed the triple response okay so whenever we talk about the ethylene biosynthesis one particular term is used that is triple response what is triple response how it's uh, why it's called as a triple response we're going to see that in a moment but this triple response reduce the stem elongation increase the lateral growth and abnormal horizontal growth these are the three components of the triple response first one is the re reduction in the stem elongation second one is the in increased lateral growth and the abnormal horizontal growth so basically this three different response or point states that normally what we know is that a plant grows from the apical bud and generally auxin helps in the growth in the apical bud and all but in this case we saw reduction in this apical bud growth what we saw increase in the lateral bud growth and also abnormal horizontal growth means growth in the side horizontal horizontal plane growth in the horizontal plane and that is really really important at this moment at this point when the plants were allowed to grow in the fresh air they regained their normal morphology and rate of growth so whenever they allowed to grow in the fresh air they regained their normal morphology and the rate of growth but whenever they are present in response to some sort of component they have this kind of horizontal growth formation okay so what says that when they are allowed to grow in fresh air what do you mean by fresh air that means there is something in the air that was causing the triple response that was causing the growth in the horizontal plane now at that moment we didn't understand but now we know that is due to the presence of ethylene which is a gaseous hormone in plant so ethylene is a gaseous hormone the only gaseous hormone that is there in plants that hormone allows the plants to grow in the horizontal plane the first induction that ethylene is in the natural product of the plant tissues so natural product of the plant tissue developed into the formation of ethylene there okay so when we talk about the biosynthesis of ethylene we start with this process known as the sam mediated yang cycle and via the acc as an intermediate to produce ethylene so acc acts as a intermediate and the rest of the process we are going to see right now with the help of an animation of how exactly ethylene biosynthesis take place okay now let's talk about the ethylene biosynthesis pathway. Ethylene is a gaseous hormone. It's quite readily produced by plants. So this is ethylene, the final product that we need to produce. So obviously, like every single biosynthesis pathway, ethylene biosynthesis also needs a precursor. So the precursor for ethylene is methionine. Start with methionine, amino acid. So this methionine is converted by SAM synthetase utilizing ATP to form S-adenosyl methionine. S-adenosyl methionine means SAM known as adomate. So methionine is converted to S-adenosyl methionine by SAM synthetase enzyme utilizing energy from ATP hydrolysis. Then this S-adenosyl methionine will be converted into two different forms. Then this S adenosine methionine or adomate will be converted into two different forms. And both this form can be produced by the enzyme ACC synthase. Now the ACC synthase can convert this S adenosine methionine into ACC amino cyclopropane carboxylate or it can also produce it into 5 methyl adenosine. So this ACC synthase is producing amino cyclopropane carboxylate known as ACC as well as 5-methyl adenosine. Now this amino cyclopropane carboxylate is converted into ethylene by ACC oxidase enzyme 
by taking oxygen and oxidizing amino cyclopropane carboxylate and by this process it produces carbon dioxide hcn and water why they produce this ethylene with this pathway we got ethylene but what about the 5 methyl adenosine this 5 methyl adenosine will be converted into methionine by a methionine cycle also known as the yang cycle in order to recycle the methionine in order to carry out the process of ethylene biosynthesis all right so i believe we have a clear idea about how ethylene biosynthesis take place once that's clear now we are going to see the ethylene source from where the ethylene is produced and the function of ethylene in plant cell so what is the source of ethylene ethylene is a gas pure form c2h4 that's what ethylene is all about gas enclosed in the can or cylinder sprayed or it can be sprayed it can be injected ethylene is probable portable and, and which can contain 3 grams sufficient to ripe 2 to 6 tons of product okay a 3 gram of ethylene is sufficient to ripe 2 to 6 ton of uh, fruit and products right it ethphone used as a spray or dip acidic in the water releases c2h4 these are different chemical forms ethylene mixture that is c2h4 plus inert gas like carbon dioxide is generally used as a cylinder for spraying inert gas because not enough oxygen remains in the chambers to provide an explosive mixture that ripe gas contains six percent of ethylene so generally we call them ripe gas where we have what we have ethylene and along with that we have carbon dioxide the inert gas there both of them together 6% ethylene is enough as a ripe gas to ripe fruits ethylene uh, generators widely used method where in liquid spirit produces C2H4 when heated in the presence of catalyst platinized asbestos so if you use platinized asbestos as a catalyst with the 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 spirit it can give rise to the production of ethylene gas we can also produce ethylene gas like that use of ripe fruits cheap and simple method where the fruit with high c2h4 produces such as apple banana mango tomato and there are so many fruits almost all the kind of fruit that can be ripe with the ethylene gas we can produce that with very cheap method we can also have the ethylene gas spray that has 6% ethylene and 3 gram of ethylene is sufficient to ripe 2 to 6 ton of product okay so what are the functions of ethylene in very simple terms as i mentioned ripening remember ripening of fruit the very first thing it breaks the seed and bud dormancy that's one thing breaks the bud and seed dormancy and we know that there are abscisic acid out there which can promote the bud and seed dormancy but ethylene is going against it so abscisic acids work is inverse to the ethylene's work in this case because ethylene breaks the seed and bud dormancy the dormancy of many seeds such as cereals can be broken by the application of ethylenes ethylene application increases the rate of germination it initiates uh, the rate of germination increases the rate of germination ethylene treatment sometimes used to promote bud sprouting in potato and other tubers as well fruit ripening is another major effect of ethylene it stimulates the fruit ripening the hormone is now known to accelerate ripening of fruit in most cases including banana apple tomato etc okay and in apple the softening of the fruit increases the increased amount of ethylene concentration so ethylene hormone in higher concentration whenever is present it's going to change the plant tissue type it's going to modify the plant tissue type okay so what is the difference between a raw so let me take a color here between a raw fruit and a ripe fruit okay the difference is that in the raw fruit the the, the components in the raw fruit is hard and uh, less acidic while the raw fruit is being converted to the ripe fruit means normally they are converted to more acidic form they are converted to uh, like the the hardness of the of the fruit is 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 gone it's it's released so modified with the help of multiple enzymes so ethylene when the ethylene is present it's going to turn on certain signaling pathways which ultimately produces ethylene response genes and the result of those proteins produces enzymes like uh, you know uh, 
different kinds of catalytic enzymes, proteases, lipases, those enzymes are going to cleave the protein, uh, the fat and components of the raw fruit into a ripe fruit and that generally does that. And ethylene as it's a gaseous hormone, whenever the ethylene is produced, it's surrounding the whole plant and, and the places. So generally if you take one banana, one ripe banana, it can uh, make all the other bananas ripe because of the gaseous nature of the ethylene hormone. The function number two is a growth inhibition. So normally people talk about ethylene as a uh, simply as a hormone that helps in the fruit ripening. But we are going to see some more additional features, additional functions of ethylene. One such feature is the growth inhibition. Ethylene uh, inhibits the growth for what? Exogenous application of ethylene inhibits the plant growth if we apply it from outside because it has some sort of effect of senescence. In most dicots, growth of the stem root and leaves inhibited by the hormone enhances radial growth okay it enhances the radial growth means the circular the horizontal and radial growth is in, in uh, enhanced and the growth from the vertical growth is inhibited stimulates abscission of course it stimulates abscission of the leaves and uh, abscission of the plant tissues it induces abscission of the leaves and fruits and leaves okay the abscission increases with ethylene concentration induced flowering so it was regarding growth inhibition but now the second is the induction of the flowering in most cases ethylene inhibits flowering but in pineapple mango and lychee it has stimulatory effect okay because we know it's ethylene is a hormone that can cause the seed dormancy bud dormancy but in case of pineapple mango and lychee it helps in the flowering process plants can be treated with ethylene directly or by using ethylene releasing compound like ethereal that stimulates the ethylene production last is the sex expression ethylene stimulates the femaleness in plants cucumber and melon normally produces male flowers cucumber and melon normally produces male flowers okay earlier than female flowers but ethylene stimulate the early production of female flowers compared to the male flowers okay and plumular hook formation in eschewlated dicot seedlings, the plumular tip, that is the shoot apex, is usually bent like a hook. This hook shape is advantageous to seedling for penetration to the soil. Remember that 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 formation of this this hook-like structures. I don't have the pictures to me, but it's very common picture that we always know. That protects the tender apical growing point from being injured while injected in the a soil and that formation is also carried out by the that is also carried out by the ethylene so that's something totally new so in summary except for the ripening of the fruit ethylene also have multiple effects like growth inhibition generally it prevents the apical growth and growth in the vertical plane but helps the growth in the radial plane and horizontal plane it induces flowering in case of pineapple mango and lychee generally it prevents flowering but in case of pineapple mango and lychee it influences flowering if we spread it from outside as well as in the endogenous response sex expression in case of watermelon and cucumber the ethylene stimulates the formation of female flowers earlier than male flowers okay and the plumular hook formation which protects the new embryo to go new seedling not embryo seedling to go inside the soil uh, and the damage can be prevented that also formed by the expression of ethylene hormone so that is the ethylene's uh, function apart from that formation of adventitious root and root hairs that's another thing ethylene induces formation of adventitious root as i mentioned earlier the plumular hook formation and remember the triple response that we've talked earlier that how can we forget the triple triple response of ethylene response number one it causes the triple response you know triple response consists of what in case of p plants okay inhibit the stem elongation but the radial growth can be uh, uh, provided stimulation of the radial swelling of the stem that's the second important point of the triple response and the third one is the horizontal growth of stems with respect to the gravity so the plant will not grow against or towards the gravity but the horizontal plane flatten 90 degree towards the gravity the triple response effect seedlings were the first to be related to begin of a discovery of ethylene as a natural plant 
hormone and it's present always and ethylene is a gaseous hormone can act in all the different tissues when it is released okay okay now let's talk about the ethylene signaling pathway we know that ethylene is a gaseous hormone and the signaling of ethylene is possible in a distance from a distance in the plant cells how exactly ethylene signals to understand ethylene signaling you need to know that ethylene signaling involves the endoplasmic reticulum cytosol as well as nucleus of the plant cell and let's look at the key players of the ethylene signaling pathway just like every signaling pathway here we also see a ligand a receptor and repressor we'll also see proteasomes as well as we will see the involvement of transcription factors so let's begin ethylene acts as a ligand in this signaling pathway the receptor is known as ethylene receptor or etr1 which are copper ion dependent receptors then transcription factor stabilizers example are ein2 and ein3 the full form of which is ethylene insensitive protein 2 ethylene insensitive protein 3 The signal amplifier is CTR1 known as copper transporter and then comes additional proteins namely ETP1 known as proteolysis regulator which acts as adductor which act as a uh, mediator to add polyubiquitin to the target protein for destruction and EIN2 target protein 1 ETP's full form and F box protein EFB this F box proteins composed of EFB that is ein3 binding f box protein and it is also associated with cooling and e2 which is a ligase that can tag polyubiquitin to a target protein for destruction so these are the key players apart from that we also have 26s proteasome complex in this 26s proteasome complex in plant cell is produced inside the nucleus as well as inside the cytoplasm so let's see what happens normally what we know is that in nucleus we have regulatory regions and the ethylene response genes there are regulatory regulatory region of the ethylene response genes upstream of the ethylene response genes and normal situations the ein3 acts as a transcription factor and it causes the transcription of ethylene response genes into mrna and then they will be transported into the cytosol will be translated into the protein products required Now let's see the situation where absence of ethylene. When there is no ethylene present, then what happen is that this is the ethylene receptor, and if there is no ethylene, then copper is added. Copper is associated because I told you that these ethylene receptors are copper ion dependent, and due to the binding of copper ion, the CTR, which is known as copper transporter, is also associated with the ETR one, and as a result, what happens? there is a auto phosphorylation of the h or histidine kinase domain which is a cytosolic domain of this receptor now once the phosphorylation is done then they also transfer a phosphate group to the ctr okay this histidine kinase domain transfer a phosphate group to the ctr the phosphorylated ctr will now be able to phosphorylate the other ein2 protein so phosphorylation of ein2 activates the et p1 or ein2 targeting protein 1 as i said earlier that the etp1 is actually a ubiquitin ligase kind of protein so they will go and associate itself to the ein2 and tag polyubiquitin to the ein2 to the cytosolic side okay and as a result it causes a 26s proteasome mediated degradation of the ein2 protein which is embedded to the er membrane and portion is present in the lumen and rest in the cytoplasm so all destruction take place and as a result what happen is that this ein3 also will be degraded by the association of f box proteins inside the nucleus this f box pro proteins associated with the ein3 and then also the e2 of the f box protein polyubiquitinate ein3 and as a result it's another destruction signal so the destruction will be done by involving 26s proteasome and 26s proteasome will churn it will degrade ein3 the transcription factor so as a result of which there is neither ein2 nor ein3 present for signaling and activating the ethylene response genes so ethylene response gene transcription is totally inhibited in the absence of ethylene 
Now let's see what happens in the presence of ethylene. In the presence of ethylene, the ethylene will bind to the ethylene receptor or ETR1 and as a result the CTR is cleaved out of the ETR1 receptor. Now the CTR or also known as copper ion transporter goes and interact with EIN2 and this interaction cleaves the C terminal site of EIN2. I denote it with C. Okay, This is the C terminal end of EIN2. So once the C terminal end of EIN2 is transported inside the nucleus, it binds with the F box protein and as a result of this C terminal EIN2 binding to the F box protein, all the F box proteins inside the nucleus are occupied and now there is no F box to degrade EIN3. So EIN3 transcription activator is free to act, it's actively available inside the nucleus. EIN3 will now go and interact to the regulatory region of the ethylene response genes and that response cause the synthesis of ethylene response mRNA and then this mRNA will be transported into the cytoplasm and will be converted into the proteins which will act as a response element of the ethylene signal. So that is all about the ethylene hormone. So if you like this video about the ethylene hormone, we, we have talked about ethylene hormone basic properties, we have talked about the ethylene biosynthesis, we have talked about the ethylene functions. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.